In this video, we're going to go over folic acid or folate. Now, you've probably heard this uh, vitamin referred to as folate or folic acid. That's its typical name. However, folate is not active in humans. It actually has to undergo two biosynthetic transformations into its active form termed tetrahydrofolate. All right? I'll abbreviate usually tetrahydrofolate as THF in this context. Now, some things about folate. Folate is a B vitamin. We cannot make it ourselves. It's actually uh, specifically vitamin B9, and, and because we can't make it, it's an essential vitamin. Okay. Um, folate is required for one carbon metabolism. So that means that there's a lot of reactions we're going to see in amino acid metabolism and nucleotide metabolism that are going to involve one carbon transfers. And in general, uh, folate is going to be very important for that. It turns out that one of the types of folate or tetrahydrofolate is going to be used to make thymine, the T uh, base ultimately needed for DNA synthesis. Okay. Um, ultimately, we're going to require tetrahydrofolate to make s methionine, the universal methyl group donor. All right. And folate is actually a fairly common deficiency even in developed countries like the United States. Um, it turns out that vitamin B9 or folate, is the deficiency of it is especially dangerous when the organism who has the deficiency is growing. So that means particularly when you're growing you know, in puberty and so on and so forth, um, it's very dangerous. But the, probably the most dangerous and significant um, imbalance that we would talk about is during pregnancy. And it turns out that if the mother is folate deficient during pregnancy, um, the infant can actually develop neural tube defects, and that's actually very bad. So what they'll often say, if they detect folate deficiency early enough, they'll, they'll actually make the mother take a folate supplement, usually in the form of a, a B complex or something like that. But folate deficiency is actually very bad, and we'll see in a couple of slides it's linked very closely to B12 deficiency. So this molecule over on the left, this is folate, not active yet, and this is only part of the molecule. We're only looking at the part that's you know, relevant here. It turns out that folate is going to have to be first be converted to dihydrofolate and then to tetrahydrofolate. Tetrahydrofolate in general is the active form of this that can undergo reactions to where it can transfer one carbon. And it turns out the enzyme that does both of these reductions is dihydrofolate reductase. So we're going to intake folate, reduce it to dihydrofolate, and then reduce it again with the same mechanism and reaction to tetrahydrofolate. And that's going to require two NADPHs. So we saw in the last video we have to have NADPH. We have to make it. This is one case where we use two of them to activate folate to tetrahydrofolate. And what we're going to see in the next couple of slides is it's very important for things like nucleotide synthesis. For example, one of the things here, DTMP, that is ultimately thymine. And it turns out that thymine synthesis requires N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. It also turns out that the conversion of serine to glycine requires tetrahydrofolate. And another one we'll see, we'll look at this on the next slide, is it turns out that the synthesis of s methionine requires tetrahydrofolate also. So this, we're going to go over basically some, uh, I'm going to just say some, uh, the basic pathway for this. Suffice it to say, what we're going to start off with is methanyl tetrahydrofolate. This is not methylene, this is methanyl. Now, one way to make methanyl tetrahydrofolate is actually um, just from straight tetrahydrofolate. Okay? But methanyl tetrahydrofolate gets converted to methylene tetrahydrofolate. Now, methylene tetrahydrofolate, as we saw on another slide, can be used for thymidine or thymine synthesis, T bases in DNA, nucleotides. And methylene tetrahydrofolate can also be converted to methyl tetrahydrofolate. And this enzyme right here is termed methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. It turns out that the methyl tetrahydrofolate is important for the synthesis of methionine from homocysteine. The methyl group on methyl tetrahydrofolate is initially transferred to B12 and then to homocysteine to make methionine. And the reason that reaction is critical is we use that methionine to make s methionine or SAM, the universal methyl group donor. Okay, so there's, there's some things here that are actually kind of important. Okay, so what happens is, is if we have elevated s methionine, that tends to inhibit this enzyme right here, which is termed uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. 
All right. Now, if SAM levels fall, in other words, we have very low levels of s methionine, that tends to activate methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, meaning we're going to get a conversion of methylene tetrahydrofolate to methyl tetrahydrofolate. All right. So what ends up happening, remember that methyl tetrahydrofolate is going to inhibit serine hydroxymethyl transferase. B12 is required for the synthesis of methionine. We often hear in the United States B12 deficiency is very common. In fact, an estimation of about one-third of Americans are B12 deficient. But when you have B12 deficient, if you can't make methionine, you also can't make SAM. And if you can't make SAM, then its levels sharply are going to fall. And that's going to ultimately um, activate methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which is going to transiently increasing the methyl tetrahydrofolate pool. Now, when we have elevated methyl tetrahydrofolate, that's going to inhibit serine hydroxymethyl transferase. Okay? And when you inhibit serine hydroxymethyl transferase, you don't get methylene tetrahydrofolate. So that's a long-winded way of saying, and I'm just going to read this point here, even though I don't like reading off of PowerPoints. Whenever you have a B12 deficiency, which is very common, even in uh, civilized areas, that reduces s methionine, which increases transiently methyl tetrahydrofolate, that inhibits serine hydroxymethyl transferase and, and kills the production of methylene tetrahydrofolate. That ultimately means that you decrease the activated tetrahydrofolate pool, okay? Because in general, we make things for methylene tetrahydrofolate, and if these levels fall, then our ability to make other things like methionine, which is an essential amino acid, s methionine, and, and ultimately thiamine, the ability to do that goes way down to levels that pose problems, okay? So it turns out that B12 deficiency can actually give similar symptoms to a folate deficiency because of more or less um, some allosteric inhibition and so forth. So B12 deficiency can mess up one carbon metabolism just as much as a folate deficiency can, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And one thing I also wanted to go over is something that was on the previous slide but I was gonna save for last. Turns out folate metabolism in humans is a prime target for killing cancer cells. And the reason for this is because uh, obviously, cancer cells divide much more quickly than normal cells, and so if they're dividing more quickly, they're going to be replicating their DNA more quickly, and so they're going to need more deoxynucleotides. One of the deoxynucleotides is uh, thymidine, okay, DTMP. We're, in other words, we want to make the thymine base. We have to make it from uracil, and it turns out the enzyme that does this is thymidylate synthase. Turns out there is a, a drug you can take called 5-fluorouracil. 5-fluorouracil can get converted to fluorodeoxyUMP through a series of enzymes, and this active, in other words, 5-fluorouracil is a pro-drug, it gets converted to fluorodeoxyUMP, which, which inhibits thymidylate synthase. In fact, fluorodeoxyUMP is actually a suicide inhibitor or an irreversible inhibitor of thymidylate synthase. It completely kills that enzyme. So in other words, if you want to initially shut down the replication of cancer cells, you give this drug and it knocks out thymine synthesis. So the cancer cell cannot replicate. The problem is, is it doesn't only target cancer cells, it targets all your cells. And this is, again, one of the reasons why uh, finding a good cure for cancer is so important, because you're killing your own cells. You're actually giving, um, in some cases, not this case, but you're, you mostly give carcinogens to kill cancer which is sort of counterintuitive, but it just kills all your cells with not really much specificity. Another target in folate metabolism is dihydrofolate reductase. It turns out there's a, an important one called methotrexate, among others. Methotrexate is a, uh, is a tetrahydrofolate analog that inhibits dihydrofolate reductase. And in general, it really doesn't matter where in this cycle you um, inhibit. Um, it pretty much kills everything else. So if, if, one, if one of these reactions doesn't work, then it ultimately makes them all not work. And so these three drugs, methotrexate, aminoterin, and trimethoprim, are used as anti-cancer drugs because they ultimately shut down the synthesis of thymine. And so basically the theory is that it's supposed to uh, prevent cancer cells from replicating, and it's uh, uh, ultimately oncostatic. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a little background on folate. 
Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. And for the most part, we've hit a lot of the really important cofactors now, and we're going to be ready to jump into actual amino acid biosynthesis in the next video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.